give her 10 drops at lunchtime. And don't forget to give her this if she wants to go to sleep. What a horrible looking thing. Mm, wish you could come. Good morning. morning. Now don't give her anything to eat, will you? Plenty of fluids, though. Is Sarah sick? Yeah. Oh, I think she'll be all right. It's nothing serious. Edwina's using one of our herbal cures. Does that mean we're not going? No, Sam's looking after her. Well, I'll stay if you like. I don't mind. Oh, would you? Oh, no, don't be silly. No, it gives him the perfect excuse. He hates exhibitions. I would if I could, but I can't. I've got too much work. When will you be back? Two. Mm. Two-ish. OK. Well, we better get a move on. Julian! Julian! Julian, we're leaving! <laughs> Sam Larkin? Yes, sister. Ah, yes, she's had those attacks before. Oh, I see. Oh, well, surely Dr. Wilmot can... Oh, is he? Well, it's rather difficult for me at the moment, is... Yes. Well, all right, uh, it's, uh, it's 20 past two. I'll be there in 10 minutes. Daddy has to go to the hospital. There's a woman there who's very sick. Now, I want you to stay in bed until Mummy comes home. She's going to be back any minute now, all right? Good little girl, Sarah Larkin. Bye-bye.
sometimes I just can't see the point of it. I have a very strong desire to escape. It's not even to escape to. It's to escape from. I still have my needs, Doctor. So do I, Mrs. Rowland. And it's not as though I'm asking too much. You right? Oh, no. Sorry, Stuart. Alan Stanton, patient of mine, signs of tardive dyskinesia. Down at wait? Well, no, not really. But you don't really need me. You're on the board now, Sam. Well, yes, I know, but it's a question of priorities. Precisely. See you in my office in five minutes. And all that, of course, is vinyl face plasterboard. Right. Well, my estimate is that you'd probably save around a quarter of a million dollars on construction costs. I like it. I like it a lot. Looks like a prison. I mean, I thought the whole idea was to create a healing environment, not a cost-saving device. Don't give me that waffle, son. I've already spent a million. Yes. I really have to go, Stuart. Sorry. Gentlemen. Oh, Dr. Cran has taken care of him. Is he? Mm. I see. This one, sister. Alcoholic. Oh, yeah, he was admitted a couple of days ago. Blonde, mid-thirties, stocky? Yeah, that sounds like him. I'd like to see him. Where is he? He's probably in the rec room. Happy hour. Dr. Elizabeth Ann. Elizabeth Ann said to her nan, Please, will you tell me how God began? Someone must have made him. Yes. <coughs> Somebody must have made him. Who could it be? Because I want to know. <coughs> and Nurse said, well, and Anne said, well, I, I know you, you know, and I, I wish you'd tell. <laughs> Come along, everyone. Sing along with me. Pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile, smile, smile. Waiting in the east paddock. I'll try not to be too long. That's all right, Mrs. Fennick. There's no hurry. I won't be too long. Tell David. That patient Weber, has he been through here? I'm not really sure, Doctor. 
Why? Is there something wrong? Uh, no, no, no. I just want to speak to him. What room's he in? Uh, room 16, I think. a few days ago and she said that he'd been drinking solidly for a week and she found him in the back seat of the car unconscious incontinent if you ask me if he doesn't stop drinking soon he'll be in a lot of serious trouble cirrhosis mm, if he's lucky well he's got one thing going for him what's that he's in good hands isn't he sister Hi, kids. Daddy. Hello, beautiful. How was it? Good. Julian got stung by a bee. Oh, did you, mate? Yeah. Did it hurt? Yeah. And he cried. Bet he didn't. Don't fight, please. Oh, I missed all that. Sounds like it had fun, though. Well, the weather was good. Missed you. Mm, that's good. Oh, Julian. Think we can have the TV down a little? Thank God, it doesn't take them long, does it? Mm -hmm. Three days without. It's a hard habit to kick. Lots of mail for you. Oh. Good. What you been up to? Oh, the usual. Getting busy. Had a bit of a shock today. Hmm? Running to Paul Webber. Oh, what's he been doing? Drinking, mainly. He's been hospitalised for it. No. Oh. Yeah, I'm afraid so. What happened? Well, I don't know. He... he didn't want to recognise me. I'll try and see him again tomorrow. Morning, Cathy. Morning, Doctor. You're early. Yes, I want to see a patient, Paul Webber. He discharged himself last night. Oh, did he? Do you know where he went? No address. What, no contact? Nothing? You might be able to contact him through the woman who brought him here. Melanie, somebody. Thanks. I'm looking for Paul Webber. He's not here. Are you Melanie? So if I'm Melanie, who are you? I'm sorry, uh, Sam Larkin. I'm a friend of Paul's. He's got lots of friends. I'm an old friend. A good friend. Well, that's what he needs right now. Come in. Thanks.
I hear he's been giving himself a bit of a pounding lately. Well, you might say that your friend and mine has a somewhat abnormal penchant for vodka. Well, I'm a doctor. I thought I might be able to help. I couldn't. What makes you think you can? It's crazy. I mean, he's got so much. I'm a muser, right? I mean, that's how I make my living. And I'm pretty good. But Paul, I mean, he's better. He's got... whatever. He's been trained, you know. Never told me that. No? He always did have a sneaky side. <laughs> you want to see him? Yes. Yes, I do. I think I know where you can find him. Thank you. It's a waterfront, isn't it? How can he afford the rent? Beats me. Listen, do me a favour. Let me know how he is. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. Is that you, Paul? Hi. Can I ask me in? What's the game, Sam? What do you mean? You're following me all over Sydney. Just trying to find you. Thought I might be able to help. Well, I don't need your sort of help. Anyway, how have you been? Terrific. <laughs> Why don't you sit down? Great view. How's it, Wiener? My kids? Fine. They're very well. I was, uh, was talking to the doctor who was treating you. He'd, he'd quite like to see you again. Yeah, well, I, I think I'll give the shock treatment a bit of a miss this time, thanks. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of shock treatment. I mean, there are other forms of treatment. Well, I reckon, Sam, that we're our own psychs. I mean, I've been wasting my time all these years. Who knows? Hello. Hi. Hi. We missed you. Where you been? Uh, I had to go to the country for a week. Hi. Right. Um, Jenny, this is a friend of mine, Sam Larkin. Hello. Hello. Look, um, Arthur caught some fish this morning. You want to join us for dinner? Great. I'd love to. Thanks. Good. OK, we'll see you then. Bye. Bye-bye. It's a far cry from three-hour lunches at Eliza's. Uh, a little. So, 
What happened? What do you mean, what happened? This? Well, it's not you're up in North Shore, I know that. The hospital? It's just a bit of a bender, that's all. You ought to try it yourself sometime. It might make it a bit less boring. I'm only trying to help, Paul. Why don't you help yourself, Sam? Why don't you help your bloody self? I just had a bit of a rough trot, that's all. That bender, it's a, you know, as a once, a, a, things just uh, got a bit out of hand. Sure. Yeah, well, don't worry. Won't happen again. I mean it. Better watch yourself, mate. Oh, you'll be sweet. No trouble. How's Edwina and the kids? I just told you, mate, they will. See much of Alison? No. Haven't seen her for a long time. Sorry. It's just the way it goes, isn't it? Sarah says you forgot her sleeping fairy. Oh God, I did too. I'll give her two tomorrow night. So, how was he? Well, I don't know. I think he was putting on a pretty good front. What does that mean? His business partner's taken him to the cleaners. Allison's walked out on him and he's got a very big drinking problem. And I'm going to help him. What sort of help? Oh, I don't know. Time, money, whatever. Do you think that's wise? Well, wisdom has nothing to do with it. He was like a brother to me for half my life, so whatever it is he needs to get back on his feet, I'll try and give him. I'm just worried you'll start something you won't be able to finish. Well, you know me, darling. I don't do things by halves. I'd have to agree with that. Oh, well, done, then. Done. Well, well, you look the type. Now, why don't you uh, come with me? We'll get a bottle of champagne and we'll go out on the harbour. You can tell your boyfriend that, that I'm an old mate of Dr. Larkin. He won't, he won't mind, I promise you. That's very sweet, you. but do you have an appointment? No, I don't have an appointment. I'm trying to Please. get one with you. I mean, what does a man have to do? Thank you. If you'd just take a seat, Dr. Morning, Mrs. Babington. Ah, here's the good doctor now. Uh, Sam, just tell our receptionist here that uh, I'm kosher, mate, will you? <laughs> <laughs> well, just step this way, Paul. We'll go into the office. See, he's expecting me. It won't be long, Mrs. Babington. Excuse me, Mrs. Babington. <laughs> You're very drunk. Oh, pissed as a fart, mate. Severance paid the form and call it. Thinking my now. Oh, Paul. come on, mate. Not in here. Hey, spoil sport. Get it out. Paul, come on, knock it off. You always were a moralistic bastard, weren't you? Just sit down. Yeah? Sorry about this, Mrs. Babington. Won't be long now. Sam, what's going on? Well, it's okay, Stuart. He's a friend of mine. That makes it all right, I suppose. What about your patience? Mrs. Babington, please wait. Look! Well, that solves that problem, doesn't it? I'm getting a little tired of your attitude. One thing, Stuart. You may own this building, you do not own me. Thanks. Paul. Not a lecture, mate, please. Listen, boy, you've got a big problem. I've got a problem. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, come on. Well, what are you getting at? Well, look at this, mate. You've copped out. I mean, it's comfortable, sterile, paid for by your father-in-law. Come on. And you're the alternative? Well, at least I've done it myself, haven't I? I've done that. And I've lived. 
and I haven't. Oh, look, mate, if you want to wimpy your way to superannuated retirement on the North Shore, then will you go for it, mate? Just go for it. Curly. Sam, you rascal. Good to see you. You too. Long time no see. <laughs> yeah, look what they've given me. Four of them put together are not worth one Paul Weber. Once, maybe twice in a lifetime, you find somebody like him. Seen him around. Anyone seen him? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I have seen him. And between you and me, he's not looking too good. Who is it? It's Edwina. Sam told me everything. I'd rather you didn't say anything about me coming here. Why did you come? Suddenly got in a panic about you. Why didn't you contact me? Well, you know why. Pride. And what else? Would you want me to spell it out for you? I mean, is that what you want? What's the matter? What's the matter? Don't hang all this on me, Paul. I'm sorry. Well, why is everyone so bloody sorry, eh? I don't mean about this. I think it'd be better if you went. Is that what you want? It's not a question of want. Okay. What do you think of it? Oh, I'm not sure. Well, she has had some success. You've seen it? No, but I've heard about it. Gentlemen, forgive me. I'm sorry to have kept you. Ellen Bayless. Good morning, Doctor. Sam Larkin. Hello. This is Curly Robertson. 
How do you do? How do you do? I'm in the middle of one of my torture sessions. You come, come with me. Which one of you has the alcoholic friend? Both of us. As you know, I'm involved in the study of endogenous opiates, or natural opiates, if you like. I believe we're going to find that they're very similar to the chemically induced opiates. Like heroin? Yes. Got you're in this game too, aren't you? <laughs> Ten kilometers? Okay, what would you like for an entree? Uh, 20 volts. Mm, tough guy, huh? Okay. More. 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 Okay, that's enough. It's well done, Steve. It was 50. Go take a shower if you like. Here we have another poor victim. He's done his 10Ks too. How'd you go, Chris? No good today. 20 volts. You still come Friday, though? Yeah, sure. I need the money. <laughs> OK, I'll see you then. Thanks. What happened to him? He's had something. Right. Naloxone? Correct. I see. Well, I don't. <laughs> Is he? Hard physical activity produces natural pain-killing opiates within the body. Now, Chris, the person you last saw, had been given naloxone, a drug that prevented him getting the benefit from those opiates. You see, what we're proving is that the high an addict gets from drugs is very much the same as the one an athlete gets after a heavy workout. Hello, Ellen. Hello, Clive. Look how stunned, that little turd. All human beings need to escape in some way. Escape just takes different forms, that's all. You mean sport can be an escape just as drugs are? Yes. It, it, it's my opinion that the thing that drives a man to sport is pretty much the same thing that drives your friend to drink. Race to the Anglers Club. Stay here 20 minutes, in case you change your mind. Why don't you grow up? You're scared I'll do you. Piss off. I'll give you five length start. Six o'clock start, said you. Whatever you think's a fair thing.
Give him a hand. Get a doctor. How many do you need? Paul. Wake up, Paul. Hey, what's up? You want it on the telephone. I'll uh, tell him to ring back. Come on, take some breaths. Deep breaths. <sighs> That's it. That's it. Good. Hi. Easy. Well, you did me like a dinner. Oh, oh. I had to half kill myself to do it, mate. Can you sit up? Oh, you was where a hard one to beat. Oh. What are you doing here, Curly? You all right, son? Hey? So you want to win the double skulls in the national championships, eh? That's right. Well, it's not impossible, you know. We've got nearly 12 months. And I took the liberty of speaking to Curly, your coaches. Oh, you must be serious, then. Absolutely. There's a job going at the club, too, if you're interested. Devious bastard. Well, what do you think? Oh, it should be a bit of fun, eh? I don't mind giving a mate a hand. You're doing me a favour. Yeah. You know, it's something I've always wanted. Be the best at something. Lift myself out of the ruck, you know what I mean? Sure. I reckon this is my last chance. I'm getting a bit long in the tooth. Yeah, well, I suppose it'll keep me off the streets for a bit. Sports medicine, mate. Round the corner and first on your left. Do you drink? Yeah. Who doesn't? No one as much as me. There you go. Enjoy yourself. Aren't you? Well, you never know when it might come in handy. Okay, Sam, that's enough. If you two were rowing in the Nationals tomorrow, do you know where you'd come? Sixty lengths behind the winners. If you were lucky. Sandra, did you manage to contact everybody? Yes, it's fine. No problems? No, all taken care of. Good. Dr. French wants to see you straight away. Tell him you can catch me outside. Fine. What the hell's going on? What's it look like, Stuart? What about your patients? Those that want to can see me at home. Which won't be very many. Yes, I thought that. If you can be serious about this, I can be too. I'm reporting you to the Ethics Committee. Well, I'd rather you didn't, of course, but uh, if you must. Meanwhile, if you'll excuse me, I have an appointment. Edwina, I'm serious. And that's what frightens me. I know you, Sam. You're never satisfied. Not in your work, not in your marriage. Do you blame me? I 
me in all I've become as a kind of super chemist, dispensing a rainbow of pills to people wealthy enough to afford your father's fees. Well, you've done pretty well out of it. Oh, yes, pretty well. I've done pretty well. Well, I'm sick of pretty well. I've had mediocre. Who do you think you are, Sam? A minute ago, you were doing it for Paul. And I am. I am doing it for Paul. God knows we both owe it to him. I don't want you to do it. Why? Is it because you feel threatened by him? No, by our I don't. Then for God's sake, tell me why. Sam, there's lots of things wrong with this marriage. But there's enough to hang on to, isn't there? We're a family. That's important to me. It's important to me too, you know that. And why jeopardise it? But I'm not jeopardising anything. If it's money you're worried about, don't, it's because I've organised... It's not the money. Well, then what the hell is it? Encouraging, wasn't it? What's that smell? It's not me. It smells like bad fish or something. Or oh, prawns. Oh, shit. Well, there goes their beer and prawn night. Someone turned the bloody fridge off. Oh, you hopeless bastard. Sorry, mate. I had a bit of a problem with the car. Who's your friend? Oh, that's Alice. It's Harry's daughter. Uh -huh. What's that mean? No, oh, come on. Well, you don't think I'm screwing her, do you? Well, aren't you? Hey, she's hardly 16. What do you think I am? This is the final for the Olympic Games. This is the one race you've been waiting for all your life. Now the starter raises his flag. Now steady on your seat. Go. Nice and easy. Smooth. That's the boy. Good job. Is that just you? Hello, Alan. Hi. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hello. Excellent sausage. What are you reading? Oh, there's an article here on etching. Oh. How's that going? In top of my class last week. Can I get you something? Oh, yes, I'm So, uh, you're as serious as Sam is about this rowing thing? Oh, well, I wouldn't be doing it if I wasn't, would I? No. I suppose not. Well, you don't sound very convinced. What's the matter? It's just we're going to be seeing a lot more of each other. Oh. Does that worry you? No. I don't want to start anything. In case you can't finish it, like before? Make it sound as if it was easy. 
I never thought that. Please, Paul. Sorry. Who's that? Oh, that's, uh, that's Curly's new girlfriend. She's a research scientist. And, uh, she's, uh, using us as guinea pigs. She's really interesting. You better come and meet her. Oh, God, where the bloody hell is he? Take it easy. Oh, Curly, if it was the first time, you know that... Look, Sam. You need that fella. Now you stay with the man. Sorry, mate. Don't say it. You're really starting to piss me off, you know that? You said it. Let's go. when I say. I mean, if you're not going to be serious. Okay, okay. There is a tendency to compensate for your good friend and mine. The other morning I actually had to drag him out of bed. We're supposed to be racing in a week. Plenty of time yet. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Probably for myself. Do you think you might be expecting a bit too much too soon? The man's on the wagon. It gets very lonely up there, you know. That's maybe my problem. I don't know. Take it from someone who does. Just remember, he does jump off that wagon. He can always climb back on again. Introduce you. Uh, you know Millie, of course, and uh, Harry, G'day. and this is Chrissy. Yeah. Anyway, so you get so, down. What's the matter, mate? This. This is what's the matter. What? Aren't you impressed with my friends? Is that it? Oh, come on, come on, friend. Paul. We had a deal, mate. We had a bloody deal. We've got a race on tomorrow. Well, I'll be there. Oh, sure. Yeah, thanks a lot. 
in what condition? I mean, how do you expect us to... Bloody hopeless. Can we talk outside? Why do you mean? You're drunk. Oh, why don't you stick around, mate, and I'll show you what really drunk is. <laughs> it's supposed to be funny, is it? I've tossed in a career. I've put my marriage at risk for one thing, for one race, and look at you. Look, I'm getting sick and tired of this brother's keeper mentality. It's not too late. You can always take a single skull. Yeah, I just might do that. I just might do that. All right, we'll do it. Go on. Huh? Look, it's all right for you to stand there and pontificate because you're safe. When you get yourself into trouble, you've got your family to bail oh, you don't out. Don't give me that shit. You know what I reckon? You're mediocre, Sammy. You know it. You just can't shake yourself out of it. What's going on? Get it, come on, back inside. Sorry, mate. It's my fault. We should have won there. No, it's not the grog. It's tactics. It's my fault. Great start. Beaten by a couple of school kids. No, hang on. Well, don't look at me like that. You always make me feel like you're doing me some sort of favour. You know, the doctor-patient stuff? Well, we call it quits. Oh, you want to? Do I have a choice? Oh, well, suit yourself. I mean, grab a single skull and see how far you get. That's not the point of all this, you know that. <sighs> I don't think I do. You think I'm crazy, don't you? Persevering like this. Yep. What's the problem? What are my chances? Of winning the single scores? You want me to be honest? Doesn't sound too good. Rough. Very rough. I thought you might say that. It's not the towel under the wheel. You got those. What is it then? I don't know. But now 
Paul. Paul's got it. You got a lot, Sam. Maybe you can find some more, I don't know. I've never seen anyone train harder. You wouldn't think of having another go with Paul, would you? It's not too late. Oh, I've thought about it, Curly. I've thought about it a lot. But, uh, look at him. What's the point? There's still time. Maybe. If you were to ask my advice, I'd say give it one more chance. I don't think so, Curly. Well, it's up to you. rummage around in my office. You call this an office? It's a boat shed. You do realize that all you think about and talk about these days is rowing. Simply not true. You're obsessed. You're totally preoccupied. The children are talking about it. Sam, I think maybe you, you need some kind of help. Physician heal thyself. Very funny. I thought you were doing this for Paul. Where does he fit into the scheme of things now? Well, I haven't left him high and dry, if that's what you think. I see him every day. The fact that he still has a job is only due to some fast talking by me. Bully for you. Edwina. What do you want from me? Tell me, I'd really like to know. I want some normalcy. Or a semblance of it. Consideration for me. I see. Sam, you can't see what you're like. Two weeks ago, I get a job illustrating a kid's book. You haven't once mentioned it. You haven't even asked to see the drawings. It's true. It's true, I'm sorry. I actually would love to see the drawings. I am under a certain amount of pressure, you know. You and me! This whole situation of you at home all the time. I'm just trapped in this lousy dream of yours. Don't you see? Before you were helping Paul, who are you helping now? Bed. One more for the road, right? We've had six for that road already. Oh, seven. It's a lucky number. <laughs> I've had it. I'll turn the music down. Up. Good music should be turned up. Oh. 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 
what? You love yourself. No, I love you. Not the same. Hmm? Mm -mm. And we know. Edwina's a very beautiful lady. Uh, but she's also my best friend's wife. And you still love her? Oh. But I'm trying not to. Hey, Paul. Sam, good day, mate. <clears throat> I'm glad you could make it. Uh, I saw you out here the other day. You're, you're looking really good. Thanks. Uh, how's everything else going? Oh, not bad. <laughs> Bloody awful, in fact. 
Everything's going very bloody awful. Edwina and me. It's hopeless. Are you getting under each other's feet, eh? No, it's not that. I don't know. I thought it was the amount of time I spend rowing, but it's not. It's something else. Anyway, how have you been going? Well, I, I'm an alcoholic, mate. You knew that, didn't you? Everyone needs an escape. Some people it's negative, with some people it's positive. You think that? Do you? Well, we could still do it, you know, you and I. What do you reckon? We have uh, one last crack at it? OK. All right. Well, this time, uh, <clears throat> let's be serious about it then, eh? Got yourself a deal. Take a break, all right? Let's just have a rest for a while. No, no, I'll be all right. Just give me a minute. Look, just have a break. Sam's pushing it too hard. Yeah, I know. I've been watching him. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but I don't think they're going to make it. Curly. Curly. Yeah? No promises, but... But I just might be able to help. I don't know much about rowing. But I do know a bit about pain. And with your sort of rowing, we're talking about pain. Lots of it. You deal with that pain better than your opponents, and you give yourselves an edge. And at your level, edges are important. Let me show you something. this. Oh, we're good, Sam. Look at this guy. I mean, we're good. Looks like I said, everything's right. Look, the 
boat, the oars, both your bodies. They're the same. The same. You see it, Sam? Yeah. Yeah, I sure do. Now, every day you're going to watch this film for half an hour until it's part of your life. Just like having your breakfast. It's going to be instilled into your brain. Oh, it's fantastic. Get it like that in the race and no one will beat us. I'll tell you something, boys. You're in that beautiful position I was telling you about. And it's terrific. Sam, will you? I'm worried about him. How's that? Well, I don't want him to burn out. I thought I was the one everyone's worried about. <laughs> How's your girlfriend, mate? It's about time you made an honest woman of her, girl. You want to know something? Do you have it, have you? <laughs> well, I don't want her to get away, do I? something. Those two out there are going to give that national championship one hell of a big rattle. Shake. The official result, Shore were first, <laughs> Tremoyne second, and North Shore third, and the time, six minutes, 58 seconds. Thanks. Are you pleased, coach? Skin. And Sam? He's over the wall, I just know it. What do you mean? Well, there can be positive addictions, and there can be negative ones. I mean, Sam's negative. He's hooked on these natural opiates you're working with. More or less. You see, I don't believe that addiction itself is actually chemical. It's more like an experience. 
difficult to describe. It's really how a person responds to a certain routine that has a, a special meaning to him. Something he literally can't do without. Like you can't do without me? <laughs> Could be. Hey, Curly! <laughs> Read that. <coughs> Hi, Ella. Sir. Stepping stone, my ass. Uh, take it easy, Sam. The Swiss boys are good. But are they good enough to beat us? A Swiss cheese. More like a bloody Swiss watch. Although their heat times are only marginally different, uh, both crews are obviously saving themselves for the big race, and despite the fact that the Australian pair of Sam. Larkin and Weber are looking very good, Sam. they're not expected to topple the Swiss crew, the current favourites for the next Olympics. Well, that's all in sport. Uh, back to you, Brian. Sorry, I just wanted to hear the end of that. It's not important. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. Oh, God, I know I haven't been easy to live with this year. I know it. Shrinks are notorious for it, darling. You should know that by now. I do love you. You know that, don't you? I love you too. Three more days, it'll be over. Will it? I promise. And then? I thought we might be able to find out what's missing between you and me. I mean, Paul seems to have found himself again. Yes. Oh, I wonder if he's really made it. Oh, yes, I think so. I think so. Paul needs challenges, you know? Some people do, that's the way they are. You know what his next challenge will be? Oh, he'll find one. It doesn't have to be in a boat. Certainly got the stuff of heroes. Yeah. Now, that's why I, I can never understand why you didn't want me to help him. I mean, we, we owe him so much. I can never understand that. Sam. <sighs> I don't know how to tell you. You and Paul. And after the fire. I'm sorry. Young Paul. Why? Why did you do that? Don't hate me. I don't hate you. I don't hate you. I just I just want to know why, uh, how long it's been going on? It ended years ago. Properly? Yes. I don't know. Yes. Yes. What, what am I supposed to say to that? Please. Please, Sam. That's an extraordinary time to tell me, isn't it? How am I supposed to row with him now? You're still talking about that bloody race. It's not just a race! Don't you understand that after all this time? It's not just a race! I don't understand anything!
Well, I'm not psychic. Edwin has told me. Oh. Why don't we sit down? No, thanks. No, I'd rather stand. Suit yourself. Why didn't you tell me? Well, it's a bit obvious, isn't it? What? Confrontation, mate. I mean, it's not one of my stronger points. What sort of an answer is that? Well, it's, it was all over as far as I was concerned. Well, how do you think I felt? I, di I didn't want to hurt you. You did that the moment you got into bed with my wife. What can I say? You could try sorry. Oh, mate, obviously I'm sorry. What do you think? You go, you bastard, aren't you? Aren't you? Ah! Hey, listen, mate, she was about to leave you. Bullshit! It's not bullshit. You can call me weak, but don't call me a liar. It's the bloody truth, Sam! Don't believe you! You don't want to believe me. Look, she was crying out to you and you weren't listening. Mate, you're tied up with your job. You're kidding yourself. It's for Edwina in the kitchen. It doesn't even work for you. But what are you doing in a double skull with me? Now? No, now, before! Yeah, it's a good question. You weren't satisfied. You've got a very short memory, boy. A year ago, you were drying out in hospital. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, mate, you know. I mean, it's a two-edged sword, isn't it? I mean, let's, let's be honest about this, shall we? Well, you're doing this as much for yourself as you're doing it for me. Is that the way you see it? Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. What am I doing here? Look, I just want you to know that I meant what I said last night. Look, I really am sorry. We could still beat those Swiss bastards, you know. You still want to race? I want to race and I want to win. What about last night? sort that out after we've won. Our last race, then. Our last race. Lane 
Pleasure to present you with the medals of the Australian Double Scout Champion. Well earned, Ray. We're very proud to hold the prize. Here's the great cup of the Double Scout Champion. Thank you. 
Well, Curly, it was hard, Curly, but it was worth it. There you are, mate. 